welcome back. This is uh, another video in Phil Bleasy's Morgan Three Wheeler Workshop series. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you want to come back and look at more of them. This particular one is about fitting the new set of mountings for the bevel box. There's another little one that goes with those that goes on the top of the box but I've left it on the gearbox it's already fitted. So let's go, we'll show you how to install these mountings. The first thing we have to do before we can put the bevel box mounts in is make sure that this aluminium floor pan can be pushed away from the chassis because we have to slide the bottom clamp between the aluminium floor pan and the chassis tube. Some of them, and this vehicle is one of them, have that floor pan glued into place with mastic. I use a sharp flat scraper that I can uh, hammer on the end of and I drive that in, cut through the mastic and as you can see I use some wooden wedges just to hold the aluminium floor pan down to give us room to get the bottom mounting in. Do that on both sides. It takes a bit of time if that mastic is on your car. If you're lucky you won't have it but it takes a bit of time with something sharp to cut through it all. If you find you've got a, a blade that's sticking as you're pulling it through, lubricate the blade with a little bit of washing up liquid and some water. That'll help you to uh, slide it backwards and forwards to cut through the mastic. And don't forget, if your floor pan has got these holes in the back here, that behind the hole in the floor there is also mastic tin. And just work carefully. We don't want to bend those plates. We only want to flex them down. With wooden wedges holding the floor pan down to give us some clearance to, to work, we can slide that bottom bevel box mounting bracket, you can see it there, the shiny aluminium bit, slide it in from the back until it comes to a point just in front of the flange on the prop shaft and just before that first safety hoop over the top of the prop shaft. Fit the top half of the rear mounting to the bevel box. Don't fully tighten the bolts, just nip them up because we're going to have to loosen them again later while we bed it all down. With the bottom half of the front clamp in position under the chassis tubes, just make sure that the handbrake cable, the two electric cables, the three petrol pipes, and the brake hose are all snugly fitted into the recess in that bottom bracket. It's best if you tie them down with a couple of cable ties. You can see I've done that there. And then they won't get nipped when you put the top half of the bracket on because it's difficult to see what you're doing. You don't need to zip those ties up really tight. But just get them so that they hold the cables all in position in the recess. Place the top half of the front mounting in position above the bottom half. Just leave it there loosely. Now lift the bevel box into position, dropping the rear mounting onto the chassis tube. Which will guide the whole thing into the right place. Now drop the two vertical bolts in, put the nuts on and just nip them to hold everything in position. You will see that when we put the bottom mounting in I got it a little bit too far forward so that now has to be slid back and for reference, and I've never measured this before, so I'll do it for you now. The front of that mounting is 50 millimeters away from this guard rail that goes over the prop shaft. The thing we're doing now is bringing the bottom half of the clamp in line with it, make sure that all of the petrol pipe brake pipe, handbrake cable, electric cables are all nice and free in the recess and then go underneath 
and put the two clamp bolts in. Again, don't tighten them yet. With everything snugged down nicely in position, go now underneath the vehicle again, fit the rear clamp with its four bolts, but don't fully tighten them. You will note that these clamps all have a polyurethane liner, which has to be compressed. Obviously, the sides here have to be compressed as well as top and bottom, and so they won't just snug down into place, they have to be pulled on a little bit of help can be obtained from our old friend WD-40. Let's give him a little tiny wet up with that. It'll make life a lot easier. I'm going to do this one upside down on my uh, chassis jig here. So that you can see how it goes. You see when you put them together there's a big gap. And that gap quickly be closed. And you should expect to see some of the polyurethane extruded out through the ends. <clears throat> With everything now nicely in place and lined up, if you now withdraw, sorry, I've had them out already, withdraw those two vertical bolts again, I know that's tedious, lift that bevel box up. And you can then slip the belt into position, pop these back in, and you should find that the belt goes on fairly easily. If it doesn't, you may have to move the rear wheel forward to get enough slack. You can now go around and tighten everything up. And the best order to do it in is to tighten first these two vertical bolts and then the two bolts holding the rear clamp to the bevel box. Then tighten the bolts from underneath in the front clamp and then the four bolts underneath the rear clamp. We will then address fixing the top stay. When tightening everything down, don't forget to double check in here that all these cables, hydraulic hose, petrol pipe, brake cable, are all free, front and back, nothing trapped anywhere. And then we won't have any problems. Good opportunity while the prop shaft is loose and able to be moved around to find those grease nipples just to open up the joint by flexing it so you can get a grease gun on there and the same on the one on the front before we then find our marks for reassembly there they are and put the bolts back in and tighten them right up with a bit of Loctite on them there is a small aluminium dust guard which prevents the muck from going up onto the seat belts. You will need to flex that down slightly and just put the top mounting for the bevel box underneath it so it snugs up nicely to the chassis tube. Then push it down into place and put the two bevel box bolts back in. With the two securing bolts into the bevel box firmly tightened, now just use the jacking screw to push the cradle 
firmly up against the top chassis tube. When you can feel all the play has gone out of the cradle, just give it one more flat, just to put a little bit of preload on there. And now don't forget to tighten the lock nut and tighten these two clamp bolts. And that's the top bracket fixed. Should you at any time need to take the bevel box out again, as I'm having to on this particular car in order to do the chain drive conversion, then as you can see, the mountings can be left in place around the chassis. You don't have to disturb them. Just take out the bolts that hold them to the bevel box and then you can just lift the bevel box clear.